Hey everyone, this is Karen Waxman, founder of Retail MBA. Today we're going to be talking about selling a hib at sports. So if you have a great consumer product that you think should be in their stores or on their website, this little training will give you some things to think about in regards to hib at sports. So let's talk about Hibet stores. Hibet stores is a retail chain that a lot of people don't know about or think about. And so I wanted to create this training video because they have a lot of buying power. So Hibet is a retailer that sells anything sports related, men's shoes, clothing, outfits, anything related to fan gear stuff for sporting for men and women. And so basically, if you have anything related to people exercising, this is a great retailer for you. Here's a few things to note about Hibet. They basically, as of recently, have over 1,082 stores they're responsible for. Could be more, could be less, but based on the time you're here, retailers do change a lot. That is some crazy buying power. That's a multi-million dollar deal if your product sells and converts, meaning they test your product out, they believe it'll sell, and then they start reordering larger quantities, and if they put it in their stores, wow, that's big money. So what can I tell you about selling to this particular retailer? First of all, since they're a sporting goods company, uh, you're gonna need something that makes sense for that retailer. But as of these days, these types of retailers are throwing in all sorts of random stuff. So if you can get in your car and go drive to that retailer, they might have some consumer electronics goods. They might have um, anything varietal that you might not think of because sometimes they're just looking for cool trends that are actually selling. I never ignore retailers just based on the fact that they are a niche retailer. If I have other product categories, it's something to think about. The other thing is they have about 900 Hibbit sports stores and then they have 179 city gear stores and then they have something called sport editions in 35 states. The reason I mention this is if you're trying to sell to a retailer and they have multiple brands within their corporate location, meaning like Hibet stores is different than City Gears, but they're owned by the same conglomerate. What that means is that if Hibet stores says no to you, you might want to explore going to something like a City Gear stores and seeing if you can get your product into that retailer, which has only 179 stores currently. And then once you get into the system as a vendor, you can go back and see if you can get your product into Hibet Sports. The reason I'm saying this is because when a retailer owns multiple brands within one retailer, they usually share the same software system. So when they share the same software system, even though they're completely separate, they do ultimately have you fill out forms to be a vendor if they like your product. And then you get placed into a, a section of vendors as getting a vendor number. And when you get that vendor number, you're officially a vendor and that's what you're looking for. And if you get one from any one of those retailers that are part of that conglomerate, you can go back to the other ones and see if the buyer will consider your product simply because you're already in their system. It's just a sales strategy. It works sometimes. It's like Macy's and Bloomingdale's um, and so forth. These different types of retailers are owned by one corporation and sometimes you can get in just by telling the buyer, hey, I'm already in the system for this other retailer that's within your world and hopefully that'll make you reconsider working with me because the buyer will know that they don't have to fill out a lot of paperwork and they can essentially possibly work a deal with you without them having to do extra work and a lot of times when these buyers have day jobs they have a lot going on they're not sure whether or not your product will sell if you're already in their system it's actually exciting for them because it's one less thing they have to do in general the last thing i would say about hibbit sporting goods is that they are definitely um, interested in manufacturers that can mass produce products they're not looking for 
you selling to just a couple of their stores. That means you really need to hone in your manufacturing. It sounds silly, but it's imperative that you get that streamlined before you start talking to this type of retailer with this kind of volume. One mix up with a shipment order and so forth, they ping you, you don't get to go back. We don't want that for you. Sometimes people just get so overzealous with having a product and they don't test out their manufacturer first with other types of retailers, the smaller ones before they get into the big brands. So we don't want that for you. You really need to test out your manufacturer, make sure they're bringing in goods that are high quality, high value. Otherwise, it could backfire on you and you can lose out on this opportunity. There's so much more to say about selling Hibet Sports. If you want to learn how to approach them, how to get them to buy in detail, please take a look at our website, retailmba.com. We are a retail consultancy. We've helped people all over the globe get their products into the world's largest retailers through our do-it-yourself programs or done-for-you services. This is Karen Waxman, founder of Retail MBA. I create these little trainings just to help you get going with certain retailers and also just to get you thinking about Did you know that they have that many stores, that kind of buying power? Maybe your competitors are not thinking about them. Karen Waxman, founder of Retail MBA, thank you so much.